and see the variation that we nailed down the tank so you can see them a little bit better. He's nice. And wiped out everything but Chihuahuas and Great Danes. Seriously, now is this a species? Yes, it's descended only from Penastratus. Uh, once I get bigger, I'll pick a name. I'm really, really good at picking names. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, okay, this morning we're working uh, species from Lake Malawi, Potomelis, uh, Fenestratus, common name is Tangerine uh, Peacock, uh, stormy sorting mystery snails in the background there. Okay, we're going to do a quick beauty contest here. These uh, we ended up with uh, setting up a relatively small breeding colony last time with young fish and some of the fish I thought might be females turned out to be males so we ended up with too many males in the breeding colony so we are going to run a quick beauty contest okay Start seeing some of the variation in this fish because uh, the males are highly variable colors. We're going to look at those two again. No. Okay, then I've got these young males over here. And see the variation in this fish? I think he's too pale. Interesting. Let's look again at these fish. I'll pick three males, I think. I like both of those. That's a fright pattern on him. Well, yellow. Okay, see, tremendous amount of variation. With a little bit of selection, I could drive this population where all the males look like that. Or I could make them look like this. Or this. He's nice. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep, I'm going to do kind of a middle of the ground thing here. I like both of those, and we're going to pick one of these. I think this is more true to what the fish look like in the wild. So we're going to go this way. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to keep them kind of in in the middle. Let's put these males in the tank so you can see them a little bit better. He's nice. They, they're showing their fright pattern now, that barring. He, he's not very tangerine. What do you think? Nope. Don't want him? Okay. Let's go back here and look. That one. One more, so which one do you think? Get a minute okay. Hmm? Oh, I don't know. You take that one. No, that, take that one out. This one? No. This one? I don't know. Okay, I'll go with your first. Okay, these are going to be our three breeder males. I'm trying to keep them close to what they look like when we got them. But like I said, there's a lot of variation in this fish. I'm going to show you in a minute after we look at females, and we'll show you another variation that popped up. So let me move this back here. Okay, there is also variation on the females. Um, I set up the to get them all in there, yeah. Let's see how many females. I think I uh, 
put in about 60 females, added a bunch of new ones. But you can see that this darker fish, these lighter ones, I thought I'd pick out two darker ones, but apparently I got lighter ones. And they, they do change colors sometimes. So anyway, that's kind of the variation. You see, most of our females look like this. By the way, she's carrying eggs. You know, she didn't spit. That's because our fish, if she spits, she'd miss a breeding cycle. So there's strong selection for not spitting until the fry are ready. By the way, we had probably a thousand little fry and there's several hundred. I mean, what, what do we get out of this we can call them? 230. 230 juveniles and lots and lots of fry. Okay, now let's look at something a, a bit different. This is the same species. And what is a species? A species is an inter, an interbreeding group of, of organisms. Uh, it's a slippery concept. Uh, one of my favorite professors, Eric Pianca at University of Texas, had gave this example in his evolutionary ecology class. You go to northern Greenland, Susie, you're waving the camera around. Can't see. If you go to northern Greenland, uh, there are two birds. They look a lot alike, but one of them's big, one of them's small. They breed in the same areas, but they uh, don't mate with each other. Big birds pair with big birds, the little birds pair with little birds. If you move to west around the Arctic Circle in the northern uh, North America, the little bird disappears. The big bird is still there, but it's slightly smaller. And the further west you go, the smaller it gets until you get all the way back around to Greenland, and it is the small bird. So is that two species? Well, it looks like it in Greenland, but then it's a continuous uh, variation around uh, the Arctic Circle. These are called ring species. You can find them around uh, isolated mountains like Kilimanjaro in Africa. Uh, and birds, plants, insects, all kinds of things. Are you trying to get by, Stormy? Uh, just, just stand there in the background. Uh, Stormy gets embarrassed easily, so we're going to make her stand there. Uh, so species is not a clean concept. Uh, take dogs, for example. They're all, all considered one subspecies of the wolf. Uh, recently been demoted from a species to a subspecies. But if you wiped out, let's say some disease came along and wiped out everything but chihuahuas and Great Danes, they were immune uh, to I uh, say so you turn around and see a ribbon snake back there by that bucket. The tail of one of our ribbon snakes. It's a live bearing snake, so they do well in the greenhouses. Okay, Stormy, you can escape. So they those would be two isolated breeding populations. Uh, because it's not really possible for chihuahuas and great danes to to cross. But if you look across the range of dogs, uh, it's a single subspecies, and again, subspecies of the wolf. Okay, so how, let's take a look at another fish. This came out of, this is the same species. It came out of the same bats this morning, but I want you to look at them. These are Finistratus, but see they're real pale. And look at the color on that male and on that male. They're all real pale. I noticed them when we netted out, we, we had these real pale fish. I suspect that's a recessive characteristic. Why do I think it's recessive? Because uh, none of the breeders look like this. Uh, so at least one breeder male and one breeder female is carrying this recessive gene, this recessive allele technically. And that does away with all the black except for in the eyes. This is not an albino because it has black eyes. It can produce melanin, but it doesn't produce melanin in the body. Uh, I'm going to set these up and I suspect any offspring we get uh, will 
be pale like this and not dark like the, the species. Now, is this a species? Yes, it's descended only from Penistratus. Uh, does it occur in nature? It's possible a fish this color might uh, experience more predation, uh, or it could be a mutation that occurred only in one of uh, one or two of our fish. Don't fall down. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna set them up for breeding. Uh, it is, uh, we will continue to call this Fenestratus, Protomelus Fenestratus, but I'll probably give it a common uh, give it a, an aquarium strain name too in quotations. Uh, once I get bigger, I'll pick a name. I'm really, really good at picking names like blue green peacock, blue red peacock. I mean, those, those are, 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 are great names. Uh, I'm a fantastic marketeer. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, anyway, I'll pick a name for it and we might have a contest later on to, uh, to name the fish. But it is still Protomelus fenestratus. All of its parents were fenestratus. Uh, it looks like we had at least, I don't know, that's probably, go back in here. This is probably just one batch of fry, maybe two. Uh, that one little fish in there is a little bit different color too. There's another one. That could be two batches or it could just be the difference between male and female growth. Uh, but I think it's probably two batches. And so one of our breeder males carried this allele and at least one of our breeder females did. Okay, good fish keeping.